So let's look at the following example that deals with Gauss's law. So suppose we have a very large and flat non-conducting plane with a uniform positive charge density distributed throughout the entire plane as shown in the following diagram. Calculate the electric field at a point close to our flat plane. So we have the following positive charge which is distributed uniformly throughout the flat plane which extends in all four directions. So we want to calculate the electric field close to our flat plane and we're going to use Gauss's law. Now in order to use Gauss's law we essentially have to choose a Gaussian surface that encloses some of this quantity of plane. So we essentially choose a symmetrical cylinder that passes through the plane as shown by the following green region. Now, the radius of this cylindrical piece is given by R, and notice it encompasses this circular region shown by the black dashed region. So that's the quantity of the plane that this particular region encompasses. So, the electric field will be constant at points on the two end regions of the cylinder. So, if we examine this side of the cylinder and the other side of the cylinder that is not shown, those two regions will contain an electric field that will be uniform. It will be constant and it will point perpendicularly with respect to this surface. Now the surface vector of this side points in this direction and it points at an angle of zero degrees with respect to our electric field. So they point at the same exact direction. So notice we only have electric flux that is coming out of this side and the other back end. We don't have any flux coming out from the sides. So that means we only have to look at the surface area of this end and the other end. Now, since we chose our Gaussian surface, now we're ready to apply Gaussius law. So Gaussius law states that the net electric flux through our region is equal to the closed integral of the dot product E dA. Now, by definition, dot product is equal to the magnitude of E multiplied by the magnitude of dA multiplied by cosine of the angle theta, which is the angle between our electric field vector and our dA vector. Now, these point in the same exact direction, so the angle is zero and cosine of zero becomes one. Now, we said by the symmetry of this chosen region, our E is constant and that that means we can bring that outside of our integral as shown. Now we evaluate our integral and we get our electric field multiplied by the surface area of the region that we're considering. So we're only considering the region where there is a net electric flux. So we're looking at this end and the other end. So, the surface area of this end is simply pi r squared. And since we have one at the other end as well, that means the surface area is 2 pi r squared as shown in the following uh, equation. Now, the r is simply the radius of this uh, cylindrical piece. So, by Gauss's law, we know that this is equal to the total charge enclosed in this region, enclosed in this black dashed circle, divided by epsilon naught. Now, let's define the charge density as the charge divided by the area. So that means we can take this equation, rearrange it, and solve for our Q. So we see that Q is equal to the charge density multiplied by the area. So we simply take this Q enclosed and we replace it with the product of the density and the area. And we get that our product of electric field and the surface area 2 pi r squared is equal to the product of our charge density sigma multiplied by a divided by epsilon naught. 
Now notice a is simply pi r squared. So we replace a with pi r squared and we get this is equal to this and we rewrite that in the following way. Now we have to solve for the electric field. So we solve for the electric field and notice the pi r squares will cancel and we're left with the following result. So the electric field close to an infinitely long flat plane is equal to sigma divided by 2 multiplied by epsilon naught, which is the same exact result that we obtain when we use Coulomb's law.